Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mining Now. Today on the show, we have a gentleman. Him and I talked uh, six months ago about a different event. It would have been remote. Now we get to do it in person, so I'm very excited. We've got uh, Fabian Kuhlman. Um, I'm not saying his name exactly right, but he says it's okay, so no one get mad at me. He is the Managing Director for Lithodat. We're going to learn a little bit about their company expanding into the North American market, which is always exciting. It's an honor to have Mining Now be a part of that. Fabian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm saying it, Coleman. I know that is not the right. You're saying it's fine, but I would like to get it right. How do you say your last name properly? Uh, you can pronounce it Coleman, but Coleman is, works. Yeah. Everyone calls me that. I'm fine. <laughs> okay, fair enough. As long as you're okay with it. Um, tell uh, tell me about Lithodat. Yeah, we are a um, Melbourne-based um, d- digital company, so we provide cloud data services. We try to make the life easier. You know, digitalization is a big thing everywhere. Yeah. And in Australia, within the mine tech company um, industry, we are a bit on the forefront of developing yeah. new technologies. So that's where we where we come in and we help breaking silos. A lot of data is siloed, you know, different projects, yeah. using sometimes the same type, but they have different... IDs, different names, you yeah. end up with duplicates, and there's a lot of efficiency loss. So we provide a, a data platform, a cloud hosted, where we standardize all the data. We bring all the data in together in one place and make it then easy, usable for our clients. And it works, it's all sitting in a, in a relational database in the back, and that makes it really easy accessible for the clients because we have an open API, which they can connect to, to any other software they want. And oh, I begin. see. So we're not doing the interpretation, but we, we simplify and make the whole data handling more efficient. How did you get into that space? Oh, look, uh, I worked many years in the oil and gas company uh, industry back in, in the UK, and we started building big databases there for our international, big national and international oil companies. Yeah. And they have some problems since years, yeah. And then we saw the need in the in the mining industry. They are usually technology-wise always a little bit behind the oil and gas. And yeah, that's where we thought, look, we offer that service now here. That's how we started Lizoda to provide the industry with some solutions which make their life easier and more efficient. What can you paint a picture? Sometimes when we're talking about like technology or, or data collection or data distribution it gets to be it's hard to put it in real world scenario so if they're not using lithodat what would be uh like what's the gap where, where did you where I mean, did you see it yeah if you still look you're still shocked seeing how many companies are still using excel sheets and that they are way to go for a lot of their their data stuff and then people start okay they load the data in because we, we use spatial data and then they put it in GIS systems and then start. It's a combination then between GIS and between other softwares you have. So it's really you wrangling around your data, you're wrangling around your, your files. Yeah. So that's where we provide one solution, which is then one database. And you can put all kind of data in as long as we have a data model developed for it. And then that makes the whole workflow much easier for the clients to use. You find your data yeah. easier. Yeah. Is it, do you run into challenges where, well, it's the way we've always done it? Do you still run into that? Oh, yeah, of course. A lot of people are still that, oh, we have always done it that way. There's a lot of convincing and we need to build the trust. Yeah. So we have an advantage. We work a lot with government. So we have 80% of our clients are current, um, actually, governments. We we work with Natural Resources Canada as well. Okay. So we help them modernizing their systems partly and helping them getting mining data, looking for new um, or available data and increase their... Do do you find people are are over, in a way though, they're like almost overwhelmed because there's so many options out there. It's almost like the Excel spreadsheet becomes a safe place. (laughs) Do you you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's one thing. And and it's... it's, um, then people are really driven by all the buzzwords out there. You know, it's always, it's big data, it's it's um, digital twin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people start panicking and it, it's, you, you need to take a bit out the, the buzz and make it really show people how things work. And and, and how it's going to work for, for them, them. Exactly, for them. because yeah. every client has a different solution, has different requirements with which you need to fulfill. But yeah. the advantage of having the data standardized means they can then whatever units or formats or 
yeah. you know, let long they want, it can be converted and streamed out using an API where you, you just map to the different needs of the clients. What does onboarding look like though? Like it, it's, and this is one of you, like I personally struggle with it because there's these great platforms out there. Um, you know, and obviously you've got the, the client book to show how effective you yeah. are, but what should the expectation be? If you're coming into an organization and they're onboarding, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a there's a company that that focuses on safety, and their onboarding it, it took takes years. Essentially, it's a mm -hmm. whole shift in culture. It's unbelievable the success they have, but you it's it has to be real commitment from the company to do it. What is that onboarding process like? Uh, if they're bringing on the Thudat? I mean, it's it's mainly first getting a group together of of subject matter experts from them who really are familiar with the data types they have, then yeah. show them the advantages compared to the systems or, or how they use it, and then show how our data can still be used in their systems or, or their software they, they use and to, to process the yeah. data. And we have some meetings, we, we do online meetings, we go to the clients and bring the groups together and have workshops yeah. and, and get them up to speed. And once people know how to use it, they, they realize straight away it's, it's much easier. And much easier. What would a what would like a major onboard? How how long would it take? Not really long. I, I think after a one day workshop, you should be able to to use. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, really quite good. It yeah. does. It also depend on how well organized their their spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, are. of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, yeah. no. I mean, for us to bring the data in, that's a different story. But then to make people use the data, I think right, is, is a different way. Um, you were mentioning to me there's a there's a video that you've got. Um, I don't think it's done at the time of this video, but um, which is why I just kind of want to play it for the audience to sort of see it. What. But can you sort of walk us through some of what's going to be in it, sort of a visual of, of what yeah. people are so doing? Yeah, so we show you some examples, some of the data we have here in Australia and in Canada, especially some geochemistry data where we can easily bring it on a map, can can analyze it. We have dashboards on the fly, um, and then that data can be exported to IOGAS. But that's not our business. You know, yeah. We provide just the data which they put in, so we show that we have dashboards because all the data is um, interactive. We can show 3D so you have a bit understanding how your mind looks or, or where, your, where your deposits are or how accessible the yeah. area is yeah. you're going to explore. And we also will show some of the minting as we, we, PIDs is a big thing, persistent identifiers. So we are the only commercial entity who can mint um, IGSNs, that stands for International Genetic Sample Numbers. So that means, you know, any essay, any sample you take, you can mint uh, a persistent identifier. It means that you, you create a digital twin, which then stays forever with that sample. But you can keep your, your naming and your numbering, but you have no more duplicates because that is a unique number mm. which stays with every sample. Wow. Uh, what um, have you, is there any recent projects? Like, uh, I mean, we get a huge audience in the US and in mm. Australia and that, but but, but well, we're in Canada, so we might as well. Any um, examples uh, of the Canadian data? Uh, or? Canadian data. There. Oh yeah, we we have. Um, for example, we we take a lot of the public available data and and clean that and standardize that. Yeah. So we we have um, implemented in our system the whole public available geochem data from British Columbia, oh. um, but also from uh, Ontario. So you have a really dense network of samples. So we we got them from from the surveys, but that data can be accessed in our platform as well than from our clan. Um, what's the expansion look like into the US and Canadian market? Yeah, that, that's where we're on. As I said, we, we work with, with government here, but we have some keen interest already from some um, mid-size and, and junior mining companies in Canada. Um, and um, yeah, we, we hope to, to get more clients here, especially also on, on a local scale where we provide solutions to help yeah. people handle their, their exploration data what's what's the challenge for trying to get into a market like this you need to build trust it's always that and i mean if i compare the, the australian mining um industry compared to, to what's going on here in canada I, it's a challenge i see is that the australian miners are more open for for new technologies for for clouds and things so there's we, a there's a australia comes like we our our client base in australia is just they're unbelievable yeah. like and I truly mean unbelievable. They just, they want to know what the stats are. They want to know what the value is. And then they want to get it done. 
it's fantastic. We when we do a we do an Australian mining tour. Our yeah, little company yeah, yeah. sends people over to do a tour of the mining world in Australia because it's just so fantastic. Um, where's that culture coming out of? It's just we and bring it here, please. No, it's, it, it, there's a lot of innovation coming out here. But uh, Canadians have a uh, conservative as, as in about them. We had someone on the show today. They went to say um, we're going to be number one, and they stopped. And they are going to be number one, but yeah. they just—it's just not. It's like almost not Canadian to say it. Um, where is that? That this passion for adopting new technology coming out of? Where do you see it coming out? I think it—it it must come from, from the mindset, the Australian mindset we have in Australia that we are we are isolated, so we want to do things really well and and as efficient and as good yeah. as possible. And I think that's where the drive for, for, for new things and for innovation is that isolation um, sort of creates uh like absolutely. a need, like we yeah. gotta keep talking, we gotta figure this out. Yeah, you know, nobody nobody's absolutely. coming here to help yeah, us, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I also have another theory. When you get weather, good weather for more of the time, mm. you can play around with stuff more. We have about six months of the year we go we just need to survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to live. <laughs> we don't got polar bears and grizzlies, but we got a lot of poisonous animals in Australia. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to go to a hike for a hike barefoot in yeah. Australia. Um, are you uh, are you pretty optimistic about about the North American market for you? Oh. I say, absolutely, I think so. Again, as you said, it's a bit more conservative, so you have to convince people a yeah. bit more. But I think once people start seeing what we do and and see the solution and the potential, there is there is a big chance, and and I think. It's a no-brainer, not yeah. not not doing it and and adopting these new technologies and yeah. Um, last question: Any big plans after uh, when do you when do you head back? Uh, we're heading back on Thursday, but okay. we're going down to Mexico first, having there meeting some clients and then on Thursday. You're to... like you're leaving now tomorrow. Tomorrow, when, yeah. So Wednesday. It's a quick. It's oh, a what quick is trip. Today? Ah, yeah. today's Tuesday. Let's redo that. We <laughs> <laughs> correct it on the show. <laughs> No, we're flying on Thursday out. Today is Tuesday. Oh, you're flying out to Mexico, to Mexico on Thursday. Thursday yeah. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. And, I got and you. then we fly back on a week later. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying you were just. I was like, uh, wow, no, that. No, that would be. You do not mess. No. That's why Australia no, no, is doing no. so well. Is that type of work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fabian, great to have you on. We we, we talked uh, six months ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Chad, had about you being on the show. And now here we are. So great. In Canada have you. again. Yep. And, and in having... person. That would have been a remote. This one's in person. It's perfect. Even better. Worked out. Okay. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thanks. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, of course, check out uh, Fabian's. Uh, we've got your LinkedIn. We put that on. People yep. can connect directly with you. We have the Lithodat website um, and the LinkedIn. So follow them on there as well. Thank you, everybody, everybody for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of Mining Now.